Okay, family. So the first question that I want to ask for mommy is, um, what was the original inspiration for choosing Ghana as a place to take people over? Yes, my sister, we appreciate energy. Greetings, family. Everybody looking energetic. Uh, that's a good question as far as Ghana, because Ghana was the sixth, sixth African country that I've been to at that point. So the first five countries, I uh, didn't really see the energy that I was looking for. Uh, the first country I went to uh, was uh, Senegal in 2004, and that was in uh, March. Then Egypt in uh, April of 2004 also. So that was my initial year in energy. And you know, Senegal I thought was, was energy because it reminded me so much of the vibrant energy of Jamaican and I was linked into learning about the transatlantic European slave trade that went on on Gori Island. So that was like a you know, good introduction and Egypt just linked me with the greatness of our people. Uh, 2005, went to um, went back to Senegal, but also went to South Africa and Kenya. So you know, I hear a lot about South Africa, and I was really trying to work an itinerary for South Africa and Kenya. But the following year, in 2006, I went to the Gambia, which reminded me just like Jamaica. And then the fo end, end of the year, towards the end of the year, in December 2006, I went to Ghana, and that was a sixth country, and that changed the whole game as far as everything. It literally reminded me of just my childhood upbringings in Jamaica. I lived in Jamaica until I was 11 years old in the sixth grade, and then we moved to New York City in, in 88, and, and then I continue on. But it just reminds me of everything, my upbringings, you know. Sometimes people ask you, can you really remember those early years of your life? Yeah. But the closest, can I, even, even when I went back as a teenager and an adult, and then I connect, I just link when I started going to Ghana, I really just keep on go, looking back at my experience in Jamaica and other parts of the Caribbean. And it's literally the, you know, Ghana's literally yeah. the Jamaica of Africa. Yeah, you know, say I, that, say that. <laughs> and then once I started explaining that to people and they started getting their own experience, other Jamaicans started feeling the same way. And we have a wonderful bond here in Ghana. You have a great uh, Caribbean atmosphere here and also a wonderful African-American association here. So we the people, most of the people that travel us on the trip has been from that environment, Black America or the Caribbean. So when you're looking to build a program like that, you're looking to build it with a country that have all of those elements. So Ghana just ended up just being perfect. I give you the roots, the culture, the business, the investment, nightlife, shopping, networking. And plus, you know, Ghanaians are the, you know, coolest brothers and sisters. Okay, so second question, and you know, when we were doing Pep Talk TV, we do have a live studio audience. If you're sleeping, you need to wake up, so you can be a part of the live studio audience. So, um, in the course of you coming to Ghana, how many people have you taken over? <coughs> yes, uh, that's, a, that's a great question as far as the numbers. Uh, now to why you just lose uh, track of the numbers. But I'm looking at about 325 different brothers and sisters all over Black America and all over the Caribbean and different parts of the Black world, including, including uh, England, France, and a few other countries I can't even think of. Awesome, awesome. And um, I'm not going to ask you about what tour was your favorite because I know it's this one, right? Absolutely. Hey. Are you supposed to say yay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right this one. Right there. <laughs> yeah, and um, I know you've done very well in terms of branding, but. Um, a lot of people are first timers, we're going to talk to them later. But talk about some of the other things that Africa for the Africans is doing. Because I know that you want to connect us to our roots. You believe in the principle of Sankofa, but you're also taking us to other parts of the world where there is um, a strong black connection and you want them to experience that. So what can we expect from Africa for the Africans in terms of future tours and some of the other places you've taken people? Yes, yeah, so the future tours and uh, all the tours are based on uh, the African for the Africa for the Africans experience, which is based back to Marcus Garvey, uh, having the vision of us being Africans in the diaspora and us building uh, and a strong African continent and working with our own brothers and sisters, doing similarly the same thing as uh, different Asian groups do, uh, Asia for the Asians, Europe for the Europeans. So, uh, you know, you hear a lot about uh, you know a lot about you see a lot of people just dedicating their life to their own brothers and sisters and it's like you you want to you, you want to do the same for your own I mean this is our energy so what I've literally been able to do is this really just uh, take you around Ghana and show you things that as I learn that really connects us to our connection in uh, the African diaspora so when every almost every single people that you meet have that connection but it just takes a while to do that because you go to a country you don't know anyone and you have to spend all that time learning and building relationships so that, that initial journey in December 2006 really helped and then from there 
we just every year we just kind of add different things on the itinerary and we just learn okay so I'm, go I'm gonna ask Bomani one final question and I'm gonna ask the studio audience if there's any question that they would like to ask brother Bomani so my question is this in terms of um, attracting folks to come to the tour, what are some of the marketing strategies that you use to get people here? I had an opportunity to talk to people and I'm always like, how did you know about this tour? And we know there are other people taking people to Ghana, but what sets Africa for the Africans apart from the other tour groups and why should they journey to Ghana with you? Absolutely. One of the um, one of my main background is my uh, logistics and strategic uh, you know, background as far as a technical support uh, aircraft technician in the military and the Navy uh, specific and one of the things I learned a lot in the Navy is about uh, this plan, plan plot and uh, strategies so when you think of a tour operation or if you're you know you're in a military operation all kind of things have to sequence and be organized so you, you just have to really build that experience and the earlier you learn these things the better but the better you can just have a focus point on what you're looking to do the better it helps and that's the uh, issue a lot of times we you know we have information as far as like I've met so many people that do tours and I was like can I see the videos and the pictures and you don't see them so yeah. the key to what we do is kill kill the competition with volumes yeah. we do videos continuously so almost we have enough videos to do two or three videos per day for a whole year a uh, lot of pictures uh, across a social network and then this we're out there connecting different parts of uh, the world sometimes I travel and we do everything we do we record so we just end up just sharing everything and I also tell people, if you're looking to go somewhere, go with you know people that are going. So if you're looking to travel, you know you look at, the, and someone is looking at information, you go on our website. Literally, 100 percent of everything you need is there before you even spend a dollar, or you call me, or you you know, or that way you can just process everything. So I think the biggest thing is just a compar comparison. So we do everything. We got books, bags, shirts. We got a lot of information all over the place, and we, so we hit the folks with the. The, the ground strategy as far as postcards all over the U.S. Uh, and you just cover as much basis as possible with articles and magazines. This is simple basic on uh, marketing 101. But the main thing about basic marketing, you just have to just give it that nice polished touch and be available. And one of the next thing is just, I try to be available on a 24-7 basis. That's why people always ask me if I sleep, but I do sleep sometimes. Uh, and what you do is this, you just you just keep on checking your communication like almost every 15 to 30 minutes. So you send me a text and message so you just get response back right away. And I really believe that's the, that's the key to this business, being available, being true, and just laying your cards out on the, on the table and letting people know who you are and what you're about and give them the opportunity to make the decision if they want to deal with you. And then build that credibility to where they see that you're about what you're about. So that a lot of times I just try to keep a nice image and try to just lay low. So family appreciate that. Okay. <laughs>